Okay, so my this particular video is related to the question which you may come across in the interviews of uh, organization like DRDO and this particular question is from the subject uh, strength of material. You know as I told you many times earlier also that in DRDO he will start with a very simple question and uh, ask you uh, very basic questions. The understanding of that should be there and you should know what is the meaning of that. I give you one example of such question. Uh, which you may expect uh, in the uh, interviews like DRDO. He will ask you that do you know what is the simple bending or pure bending. He will start with that do you know what is the pure bending. You know simple or pure bending is the bending in which there is only bending moment but no you know uh, shear stress loading. He will ask you that are you aware about simple bending case I mean the case in which there is only bending if you take cantilever subjected to only bending moment at the end then the shear force diagram for that particular case is this there is no shear force and throughout the equation throughout the length of the beam there is only bending moment so this is SFD this is BMD only bending moment. Now this is the case of pure bending. The pure bending, simple bending means only bending moment, nothing else. Now if I give you a straight beam subjected to bending, straight beam subjected to beam bending, we get a simple bending equation m over i is equal to sigma over y is equal to e over r. Now, what is this particular case? Let us say this is the straight beam I have given you and this is the cross section of the straight beam which I have given you. The moment there is a bending on this let us say there is some kind of you know bending which is produced in this particular beam let us say this is the bending which is produced in this beam understand and let us say I give you two sections here I give you two sections and there is something which is called a neutral axis on a plane there is something which is called centroidal axis, there is something which is called neutral axis. You know what is the centroid or center of gravity? Now this G is the centroid or center of gravity and this is the centroidal axis. What is neutral axis? Let me explain you the neutral axis also. If you see these two sections, let us say I give some names to this, let us say AB, let us say CD right a b c d let us say the distance between these two section is x now a becomes a dash b becomes b dash c becomes c dash d becomes d dash any idea what will be the length of a dash b dash you will say sir a dash b dash will be a b or the length was x minus delta x let us say this length a dash b dash looks like like lesser than that of AB and what about C dash D dash length of C dash D dash looks like something which is more than that of X. So one fiber elongates another fiber compresses contracts now the fiber which elongates there will be tensile stress induced in that and thus fiber which is you know which uh, contracts the compressive stresses will be induced in that and if you see the kind of stresses which are induced and if you plot that particular thing then on the cross section you can plot that there will be compressive stresses and there will be tensile stresses something like this. There will be some kind of fiber there will be some fiber where there will be neither change in length I mean the length will not change and that fiber is called neutral axis. So when there is no change in length on that fiber there will not be any stress. So if the bending stress is zero at particular fiber that particular fiber defines the neutral axis. So there is a centroidal axis there is a neutral axis. What is centroidal axis? Sir the axis passing through centroid you know what is the centroid. What is neutral axis? Sir axis at which stress is not there. Why stress is not there? Because sir length does not change. So first the strain or deformation comes then the stress comes due to bending the fiber the length of the fiber is changing now there will be some fiber in in case of which there is no change in the length and hence there will not be any stress induced 
so in case of the straight beam subjected to bending there will be neutral axis where there will not be any stress as you keep on going on either side of the uh, you know neutral axis on the fibers the stress will be induced tensile and compressive stresses will be there now in this particular case the centroidal axis and neutral axis are same now he ask you in the question what are the assumptions behind this particular simple bending equation r as you know is the center of curvature you know uh, i can tell that this is the center of curvature radius of sorry curvature not center of curvature radius of curvature of this neutral axis from center of curvature r e is the modulus of velocity sigma is the bending stress induced y is the distance from the neutral axis to any particular fiber m is the bending moment i is the moment of inertia all these things are known to you now what are the assumptions now many students are not clear about what is what is the simple bending equation what is the meaning of simple bending and what are the assumptions one of the very very important assumption if i tell you one of the very important assumption is like modulus of velocity for tensile loading is equal to modulus of velocity for the compressive loading the modulus of velocity are the same can you show this thing on the stress strain diagram so if i give you a stress strain diagram let us say for mild steel the slope gives me the modulus of elasticity this is the tensile loading understand what about if it is a compressive loading so suppose this theta dash is equal to theta compressive loading tensile loading the slope of particular stress strain diagram for tensile and compressive if it is same you can say the modulus of velocity for tensile and modulus of velocity for compression is going to be same so the modulus of velocity is same means if you take stress strain diagram it should be same that is the interpretation of it modulus of elasticity is same that is one of the assumptions of this bending equation what is the another you know uh, assumption for this plane of loading is plane of symmetry there is another assumption that the plane of loading at which i am loading the body has a plane of symmetry now i will be discussing that meaning of that again what is the meaning of that but another very very important thing is the plane section remains a plane the plane section remains plane now the interpretation of that is m over i is equal to sigma over y is equal to e over r when we say that the plane remains plane this was the plane section even if it is bending this section ab this section ab remains plane this section remains plane that means there is no protruding of the layers outside it does not become like this it remains plane and that is one of the reasons why this bending stress is a linear function of distance from the neutral axis the bending stress is induced in the straight beam subjected to bending moment the bending stresses are linear function of the distance from neutral axis that is because of this assumption plane section remains plane what is the meaning of this transfer section before loading and after loading remains plane and that is the reason this bending stresses are the linear function of distance from the neutral axis now we'll ask you that what if i give you you know the curved beam already you know what is this let me see whether you recall what is this you know this is the crane hook subjected to some kind of loading suppose there is a crane hook now this is not a straight beam there is a bending moment suppose i give you any particular section ab now if you see on this section let us say some distance x this distance x so the bending moment here is a w into x and this bending moment for this ab now this is not a straight beam this is the already inclined or curved beam so how do you calculate this particular things for the curved beam if the beam is already curved let us say this is already a curved beam if i give you let us say i give you this kind of beam already curved beam let us say this is the centroidal axis let us say this is the centroidal axis now if this is subjected to some kind of bending it is going to bend like this it is going to bend like this understand this it is going to bend like this so suppose there is another now this a point let us say this is a this go to a dash this is b this go to b dash this is c this go to c dash so curved beam 
in case of curved beam how do you think the bending stresses are going to induce so he will start with a very basic question from simple bending ask you the assumptions for that he will ask you how this entire thing you understand then you will take you to stress strain diagram then come to bending beam and now this is the degree of difficulty he is increasing now in the curved beam how do you see the bending stress is getting induced in the curved beam how do you see the bending stress is getting induced what do you understand by that particular thing now now this is the centroidal axis let us say this is the r for that and now this is becoming r dash new radius of curvature and earlier radius of curvature so now the radius of curvature is also getting changed and he now wants you to analyze this entire thing how do you understand is going to be the you know stress is induced in this curved beams let me give you a formula here bending stress induced in curved beams is to be calculated like this formula i am giving you this formula now what is h h is the height of this particular section y is the distance of particular fiber from the centroidal axis centroidal axis r is the radius of curvature of the centroidal axis m is the bending moment a is the cross section area so bending stress which is induced there is a formula for that now for curved beam centroidal axis centroidal and neutral axis are different for straight beam they are same but for curved beam they are different now how do you find the neutral axis you need to make the bending stress zero that is what the definition of neutral axis is the moment you take it to zero what formula you get is you get in this case y is equal to r h square i am avoiding negative sign r square plus h square this is how you identify the neutral axis for different cross section it can be rectangular it can be triangular it can be circular this is how the location of neutral axis is decided and i tell you one more thing also the bending stresses induced in the curved beam are not linear function of y they are non linear function of y and you get different kind of you know uh, like i gave you that uh, bending stresses for straight beam are like this suppose this is a neutral axis this is a neutral axis and these are bending stresses which are linear function of you know the distance from the neutral axis that is y but what about the bending stresses which are induced in this particular you know curved beam so the neutral axis so what you get is the they are non linear function this is the neutral axis and bending stresses are non linear function of the distance from the neutral axis this is how you get the value of y because sigma is not a function of y now non linear function of y if you don't know the curved beam you have not analyzed at least you should know that sigma or bending stress is not a linear function of y it is a non linear function of y that is all you should know the rest particular thing is same so in this kind of question when he will ask you question one by one one by one have you seen the hook uh, the crane hook how do you manufacture that crane hook what is the manufacturing process you how do you strengthen the crane hook what kind of loading will be there what kind of stresses are induced on the crane hook so if i give you a crane hook can you make a crane hook okay now can you tell me what kind of stresses are induced on this side let us say this is ab side and this is bc side so what kind of uh, sorry this is the cd if i take so what kind of stresses will be induced the loading which i am doing try to understand now what kind of stresses will be induced on ab and cd where will you get the tensile stress where will you get the compressive stress direct stress is always tensile stress that will be there on both the sides that is let us say this cross section area is a and this load is w w per unit a is the direct stress which is a tensile stress that will be here also that will be here also any idea on which fiber do you get tensile on which fiber do you get compressive so the moment the bending moment is applied w into x the impact of bending moment is the curvature of this is going to reduce it is going to straighten it up curvature is going to reduce it is going to straighten it up the, the moment it is going to straighten it up this fiber is elongating this fiber is becoming uh, you know uh, shortened so there will be compressive uh, bending stress here and tensile bending stress here 
so that question also is asked many times in the interview if i give you a crane hook subjected to some load you know crane hook mein kaisa load lagta hai to is fiber pe kaun si bending stress induce hoga tensile or compressive answer is compressive and this side tensile direct stress is also going to be there so tensile tensile sigma d plus sigma t on this side sigma c is negative and sigma d is positive that is how you have to compress so all these kind of questions he will ask you from one after another and keep on asking the question you need to understand how to answer it i hope some concept is clear to you these are the typical question you can expect in interviews like uh, drdo prepare well and i am very sure you can answer this all the very best thank you